It says we are live again. Oh, jolly good. You One did. more week and I'm still here. Still above uh, ground. Oh, yeah. With the 100 day cough. I oh, know, I know. Oh, yes, I've got the cough, the famous cough. What was it? But it wasn't the cough that carried, they carried her off. off. It was the coffin they carried her off in. There you go. But I'm not going yet. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I hope you're all coping with the weather, folks, because. Crazy. I mean, here on the West Coast in Los Angeles, we are so lucky because the rest of the country is having a dreadful time. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't rub it in, but it's, no, it's right. 63 and partly boring today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, partly boring. Absolutely. Well, we're very excited this morning oh, yes. to have this wonderful artist on our show. Um, our friend Reed Glick, who is the R in our entertainment, uh, was at a show recently and was just blown away by... The performance, the artistry, the voice, the look, the whatever, and I think you guys will be too yeah. when you discover. And has been posting some videos and some tour dates and stuff this morning. So without further ado, live from also L.A., uh, please let's welcome Morgan St. Jean. And here Hi. she is. Hello. Good morning, Morgan. Hi. Hello. Nice Good morning. Yes, thanks for having me today. Pleasure. And thanks to Reed for introducing us. Oh, he's That's... just the best. Yeah, he is. He's a great guy. So where were you playing when uh, Reed was in the audience? I played at a venue here in LA. It's in downtown. It's called the Moroccan Lounge. Mm -hmm. And it was actually my first headline show ever. So oh. I was super nervous, but yes. I think it went off without a hitch, mostly. Um, yeah. yeah, and it was it was amazing. I, I've toured quite a bit in the last year, mainly in Europe, but this was my first headline show in my hometown because I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. So Great. it was so special. And I was convinced that no one was going to be there. Like, I was so scared that yeah. it would be empty and it was totally packed. So it was awesome. That's okay. great. Well, you got lots and lots of you got 180,000 almost followers on Instagram, don't Good you? God. This is true. Really? It's it's weird to try and like correlate a number on social media to actual people, you know? That's true. Sure. That's true. So it, I've had to I've had to kind of adjust my mind because I forget. Like I look at these numbers and I'm like, that's so many people. And then you actually meet them in real life and you remember that they're people with stories and and their own lives Ooh. and all these things and you don't know if it's going to translate to people actually coming to a show. So it was right. very cool for me to see that That's it actually true. worked out. Well, and the thing with social media too, obviously it's global. So you, you have 180,000 followers, but they could be in Copenhagen or Mumbai or yes. anywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. Not necessarily right in the, in the backyard to buy a ticket to downtown LA. Exactly. Yeah. But, so you know, I wish we'd met you a little earlier because my niece, Benna McCartney, that I will turn you on to also my, my, uh, stepbrother's daughter also an amazing singer and musician she lives very near brighton oh England. amazing so if you're going back let me know because she and her husband dave would absolutely dig your your music you guys are cut from the same cloth yeah oh, that's amazing yeah i got uh, to go to brighton on the last tour for the first time and i loved it yes it is yeah. nice it's a cute okay. little town yeah did you, did you get to have any fish and chips or are you not a not a, a fish meat eater I so I I do eat meat, but fish and chips for me, I'd rather have like a chicken tender. Okay, okay, you know? okay. It's just more my vibe. <laughs> just like, like my husband, everywhere we go, if they've got chicken tenders, chicken fingers, children's food, we call it. <laughs> That's how I feel. I literally, I'm like, if I could eat kids' food and only order off the kids' menu for the rest of my life, I'd be yeah. thrilled. <laughs> If I was stuck on an island, I would want a grilled cheese and French fries forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Jam butties. Yeah. I think cheese, <laughs> bread cheese, and jam. Cheese yeah. is the hardest thing to give up when you're trying to do the veggie thing. I moved to yeah. Munich many moons ago when I was an artist. I was recording for BMG and um, had a German husband, not this one, the last one, <laughs> the middle one. And um, middle one. I could not get along with pork for breakfast lunch and dinner i mean I, i'll take me a slice of bacon once in a while but i decided to go vegeta vegetarian because i couldn't do vegan i can't do without cheese i mean how can you have a lasagna without cheese i try i can't even imagine i mean truly all my favorite foods have cheese so more power to people who have the discipline to not eat cheese yeah. <laughs> we have a, we have a, a a fellow veggie on and a musician, Nick Black from Memphis, that I would actually love you, love to hook you up with. I, I think him. you mentioned him to me. Yes. Yeah. He's he yeah. amazing. You guys should collab or meet at least on Zoom. And yes, I would love that. Figure out a Twitch raid between you. Yes. <laughs> hey, Nick, nice to meet you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So how did you get, how did you get started? Is music in your family or it's just in your, your blood or? 
Music is very much not in my family. Oh. <laughs> my yeah, it's so it's so funny. My parents always joke that they have no idea like where this passion and whatever where oh, it came from. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, my my dad and I used to drive to school together. He worked near where I went to school, so we would like carpool and we would listen to music together, but it really wasn't I wasn't in like a musical family growing up or anything. Um, but I just, I, I have always loved singing. My godparents got me a karaoke machine for my bedroom when I was like five. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I want and, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> and I would sing, I would sing, you know, Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears and the Spice Girls and all of those sorts of artists. And, um, and then when I was in second grade, I auditioned for the school choir. I went to Catholic school for a short period of time. Uh -huh. And so choir was a big part of the church services sure. and I auditioned. And I got into the choir and I started doing the rehearsals and, and everything. And then um, a few weeks into rehearsal, the director pulled me aside and he was like, hey, is your mom picking you up from school today? And I said, yeah. And he was like, well, I want to talk to her. So I thought I was getting kicked out of choir and I was devastated. And I'm like nine years old, just like crying, thinking I'm getting kicked out. And he actually told my mom that he thought I had some talent and he wanted to like train me. So that's oh, how wonderful. Great. Mr. Nove, shout out Mr. Nove. He is yeah. he is why I got into music. So Absolutely. I started in, in choirs and then I started doing musical theater in school. And uh, all the while I was kind of writing songs. My parents got me a songwriting journal for Christmas when I was, you know, maybe oh. nine or ten. That's nice. It was so cute. And it had all these little pointers for how to write, you know, a verse and then a chorus. And it was really sweet. And I, I wrote lots of songs. My first song I ever wrote was called My First Hit Song. Shockingly, oh, okay. shockingly did not become a hit, but that's okay. <laughs> it's still time. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So yeah, yeah, and then I just, I kind of never stopped and I just fell more and more in love with it, you know, my yeah. whole life. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I wrote a song called Overnight Success. <laughs> it didn't work out either. Yeah, yeah, you know, sometimes we manifest via songs and sometimes we don't. <laughs> yeah. No, 10 years on, I'm more or less an overnight yeah, success, success yeah. with the emphasis on the less. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. They say it takes 10 years to make an overnight success. So that's right. Yeah. That's, well, that's Just right. Trying to put in the hours. Yeah. So how do you go about getting your... Um, your bookings and stuff because I you know you've toured in, in England and you're going back out with ex ambassadors, which yes. Angie just posted to some of our old stomping grounds, Germany. Yeah. Um, how, how does that, how, you know, how do you do that? Do you have tips for any artists like yourself who, how do you hook up with either bookings or another act or whatever? That's honestly a, such a great question because I think um, when you're wanting to book things, you think that there's this, you know, big secret that once you meet the right person, they'll book you on these tours. And, you know, I always felt that way. I always felt really confused as to how it happened. Yeah. And the truth is I have gotten pretty much every show I've done from cold DMing artists that I love. Wow. Oh, so I'm see. just very shameless and I'm okay. not afraid of rejection, really. And I just sort of, you know, I'll, if, for example, the first tour I ever went on, I opened for this amazing girl called Cloudy June. Uh -huh. And it happened because I saw that she followed me on Instagram and I recognized her name from my related artists on Spotify. She also sings about some of the same stuff that I sing about. Right. And I went to follow her back on Instagram and I saw that she had just announced a tour. So I just DM'd her and I said, I love your music. Any chance you're looking for an opener for this tour? And she said, Perfect. yeah. Oh, wonderful. That's and, great. Yeah. And the exact same thing happened on the last tour I went on opening for another amazing band called We Three. Yep. Um, I just DM'd them. I saw that they had liked some of my videos and I reached out. I said, I'm a big fan of your of your work and I would love to open for you. Great. Wow. That's yeah. Well, that's the good thing about social media and that it has its it has its drawbacks and its its creepy side. But, you know, oh, yeah. I, we live in a world of chefs as well as musicians. And I have met so many five or six hundred chefs around the world, literally by just direct messaging them yeah, totally. and striking mm -hmm. up a relationship. And, you know, the good thing about that, too, is you can keep it at arm's length until you figure out if somebody's cool or not. Yes. Um, you know, Absolutely. you don't have to give them your phone number or your email. You can just keep it in that in that portal. Mm -hmm. So it's very I always good. think the worst thing that happens is they just don't see it or don't respond. Yeah. Yes. Or, or they have you know, somebody else handling their stuff for them that doesn't have the authority to answer back, in which case yeah. you, you wouldn't get anywhere. But I always think that no response is a response. Agreed. You know, somebody doesn't get back to you, you think, oh, dear. What did, <laughs> that, what did they say that was wrong? Yeah. But it may be you just get lost in the mass sometimes. Well, I would, I would push back on that a little bit just because 
I mean, we manage McCartney Multimedia, we manage 134 social accounts for our clients. Wow. And we can't, you can't possibly see everything every day. No, Sometimes right. stuff just, just slides by, the you cracks, know. Yeah. Sure. So, and I also um, think I think there's such a and I understand it because I've had it in the past, but there's such a fear of rejection. And I think if you can get over that and one of my yeah. friends told me this and I thought she was so smart for saying this. She said every rejection is one step closer to a yes. Yes. So you should be excited every time you get a no. And yeah. so, you know, if I reach out to an artist and they don't respond or because they don't think I'm the right fit or or they mm -hmm. flat out say no, I'm not really offended because I'm like, mm -hmm. what's one no closer to a yes. No, I always oh, think right. no is a good answer. Mm -hmm. It's at least an acknowledgement and you know where you stand. Right. I mean, I, really, yeah. I, I, no, is, uh, no is positive in as much yeah. as don't waste your time, move on. Maybe drives me insane. Yeah. yeah. No, there's oh, nothing yeah. worse than not knowing. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. You yeah. know, when I was coming up a thousand years ago in the music industry, the traditional A&R people were terrified to sign anybody. You'd go have all these meetings and pitch your cassette, you know, mm. and they'd say, yeah. oh, well, the drums are a little loud. Maybe make another meeting for two weeks hence and go remix it and bring it back. So what I would do is I would take exactly the same mix and copy it onto like a hot pink Memorex cassette, take the same thing. Oh, well, now that's much that's better. better. Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. Right. So they would just play delay tactics because if they signed you and you flopped, they'd get fired. But if they right. didn't sign you, you went across the street and became Madonna, they'd get fired. Right. So yeah, I heard maybe a lot in the 80s and early 90s, and it just drove me mad. I'm like, have the balls to just say no, it's fine. Totally. <laughs> I think I think that's one of the beautiful things about social media, you know, aside from the ability to just reach out to people directly. I also think it's really democratized music consumption because I think so much good music has been lost over time because yeah. the A and Rs just didn't believe in it enough or they weren't willing to risk their jobs over a yeah. certain artist. Uh -huh. Whereas, you know, if you're posting on Instagram and you're posting on TikTok, if it's, I really believe that if it's high quality, it will find its audience, yeah. you know? And so yeah. I think that's one of the best things about social media is that it's kind of taken the power away from those, I like to call them the dudes in suits, you know, yeah. from being I think able to you've got stop. a great attitude. I really do, Morgan. You're on yeah. the right track. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. All the, all the crowd are absolutely agreeing yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah because again, it's like opinion. It's, it's, it's like, it's you like know. assholes. Everybody's got one. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's I absolutely say, did right. Did I say that in my out loud voice? I'm sorry. But it's like again, back to Chef World. Mm -hmm. You know, you are down to one palette of one person who is a food critic or a food writer or a blogger or a journalist or what, even worse, a Michelin star inspector. Mm. And if they don't like some an ingredient or if they're allergic to something, mm. you're just not going to get the accolade because it's in the hands of one person. Right. Mm. Right. It's well, just, and that's the thing about art, food, all of those things is it's so subjective. So I, it's, you know, so much of it is just like finding the right person at the right moment who's in a good mood or whatever. Yes. And so I think if we can take advantage of social media as artists, it just opens us up to such a, a bigger world of people who might really resonate with what we're saying. Yeah, right. that's right. Well, yeah. and I think to your, your message um, of your new single that's coming out, um, about mental health, you know, again, I'm not a huge Swifty. I wouldn't pay $10,000. Mm -hmm. to her. But what she's been able to do through her lyrics and her writing is reach a generation of especially women, yeah. which is I think what you're particularly amazing at is, you know, just as a formerly as a lyricist, I listened to your music all weekend and I was like, wow, this Morgan's got it going on because you're, you're telling so. your personal opinion and story without shoving it in somebody's face but so many people are latching onto it yeah. like when your audience sings along with you what does that oh. feel like? I mean honestly it's it's almost impossible to describe yeah. it's something that like as an artist and as an aspiring artist I always dreamt of but I don't think you really understand how mm -hmm. deeply connected you feel to these people that you just met. Maybe you don't even speak the same language as them yes. and you're across the world and, and you're just relating over this thing. And, and like you said, it's so crazy because I'm writing my personal stories, but then somehow they're resonating with hundreds and thousands of people. Right. And <clears throat> one of my favorite quotes is by Maya Angelou. And she had a quote that said, uh, all great artists draw from the same resource, the human heart, which shows us that we are more alike than we are unalike. Uh -huh. And I yes. just love that because it's like, I always tell people, if you want to be an artist, the best thing you can do is be as authentic and vulnerable as you can be. Yes. Because right. chances are that somebody else is going to relate to that. Exactly. 
Yes, you, yeah. you, you can't be just one in eight billion people. It's, it's an impossibility when it comes to emotions and mental health and right. all of those things. There, there is a kindred spirit out there for you and probably hundreds of thousands of them. Yes. Right. Um, and I think, I think what's so cool for me is that I have just been able to find this community of people that they're so amazing. They're such good people and mm -hmm. they make me feel so supported and seen. And it just inspires me to write more and more music about my most vulnerable feelings because they've received me in just the most supportive, like beautiful way. Yes. Well, one of the lyrics that just, I, I mean, it touched me, but then I, I played it back again to make sure I'd heard it right. It kind of made me smile. It made me giggle mm -hmm. was um, luck be a lady, but karma's a bitch. I'm <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so immediately I wrote to Morgan and said, Oh my God, that's the best t-shirt ever. Luck yeah, be I a know, lady. I gotta do it. I'm on the back. Yeah. And then, you know, the guy yeah. or the girl or whatever is checking you out. Uh, and then they, of course, they always turn around to check out your bum. Yeah. Hey, what's that look like? And then it's just going to say, I'm gone. Karma's a bitch. <laughs> So it's so I, true. You make one, let make make one in triple XL, and I'll get it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> but but again, you know, you can reach people nowadays with things like merchandise on demand. So you're mm -hmm. not chopping down forests and trees and making T-shirts that will never sell. Yeah, that's the beauty of things like Printful and Squarespace is that you know you can come up with an idea, mm -hmm. and if somebody and what, buys a T-shirt, they'll print yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. absolutely. No, it's amazing. Yeah. And the other thing that's so cool that I've seen is, uh, you know, related to to merch stuff is fans creating their own merch, essentially. You know, yes. I went to a show in Munich and I was walking into the venue and some of these amazing girls had made stickers with my lyrics on them. And then they had QR codes that went to my music and they were posting them all over Germany. Oh, how great. How wonderful. That's wonderful. Just completely on their own accord. And then they gave me a bunch to take home with me. And so then when I played my headline show in LA, I gave them to a bunch of people at the show. Yeah, that's absolutely. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, we love QR codes. We use oh, yeah. them for absolutely mm -hmm. everything. They're amazing. And now ever since COVID, everyone knows how to use them. That's every right. Every menu and, you know, everything was on a QR code. We started a, a QR code concern about 12 or 15 years ago now for real estate. So it you instead called of, Connect Code. It was called it? Connect Code. Yeah. We yeah. wound up um, folding it into Remax, sold it to them. But it was instead of having, again, eco-unfriendly paper flyers outside a house for sale yeah. or a house for rent, you just scan the code and then you go to the virtual tour of the house on YouTube. Amazing. And we mm. literally had to drag kicking and screaming people, well, what's a QR code? Quick response. Well, what does it do? You know, I mean, so now... Um, I think probably the only good thing to come out of the pandemic is everybody knows how to use QR codes because we all wanted food. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's absolutely mad. Silver lining. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So uh, how did your family feel about you wanting a musical career? Did they support you or oppose it or think, oh, it'll <laughs> Buy well, you a get over book it. is one yeah. thing. Buying yeah. you a five-year-old a karaoke machine is one thing, but fully yeah, behind yeah, you yeah. is something else, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm honestly so lucky. I really, really have the most incredible family. Like my parents come on tour with me. My mom literally plans my tours for me. My dad drives my van. They could not be more supportive. Fabulous. Which is so, I mean, I, I, I honestly don't know that I could do it if they weren't so supportive mm. because it's, it's so hard. It's emotionally really challenging. You can feel really lonely. And so having them be so supportive and so, you know, just even when I would feel really frustrated with the industry and feel like maybe I shouldn't be doing this, they were always like, you love this. You have to keep going, you know, oh, and that's they've wonderful. seen, yeah. yeah. And they've seen sort of the reaction from audiences and, and fans. And they're like, we see the impact that you're having on people. You can't like give up on that. You know? Yeah. It was definitely a period of time where they were like, maybe you should get a real job. <laughs> and they've always been really focused on education. And, and I was, I was good at school. So they wanted me to really focus on school and get good grades. And, yeah. um, but I think they're, they're all in with me, but which is amazing. Wonderful. Well, I'd love to meet them because they live very close to us. Down I know there. we'll all have to do a tea or coffee or something. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's, mm. it's great to have a, not a momager per se, but you know, a, a da dad roadie and, um, you know, mom. I call her my tour momager. Yes, there you go. <laughs> I right. was once one of those. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah, that. A long time ago. Yeah. Only I had to go to Russia and Siberia and all sorts of lovely places. Like that. <laughs> In helicopters older than both of us. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I said to my parents, 
I said, I'm worried that you guys are going to get tired, you know, cause they won't come for the whole tour usually, but they'll come for like a week or so. Yeah. And I was like, you know, we're sitting in a van driving six hours a day to places that you've never even, I don't even know where they are on a map. Right. And my parents were like, yeah. And my parents were like, no, we love it. They were like, it's so fun. We get to watch you live your dreams. We get yes, to see the world. We get to see parts of the world that we might never have explored exactly. otherwise. Right? Yes, that's wonderful. I saw an another one of our musician ladies, Julia Detweiler. She's like a heavy metal rock sing goddess singer person. She's amazing. She posted some, she was on the road, I guess, and lost. And she's like, <laughs> Magellan is, you know, discovering new countries with uh, using the stars and set squares. And I'm over here with GPS and I just missed my exit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No kidding. Yeah. Oh my God. My dad was all stressed because he got a, a ticket when driving in some, I don't know what country we were even in, but he was all worried because he couldn't pay it in like US dollars. And he was like, oh my God, am I ever going to be able to drive a car again in these countries? He was worried he'd never be able to rent a car again. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, no, that's, that's no fun. Foreign, foreign speeding tickets. <laughs> I know. I know. And then my mom is like sitting in the passenger seat and she's like, I told you you were driving too fast. Yeah, yeah, well, so. And then there's the whole England other side of the road thing. Oh yeah. No, I don't even try that. I don't even try it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Keep the driver in the middle. That's yeah, you know, exactly. That's, it. that's yeah. the only yeah. trick. So um, when do you actually go out on tour next? with uh ex-ambassadors when does the tour start in a few the weeks tour, right? yeah it's in a few weeks which is so crazy i actually found out about this tour when i was like a week into my last tour so it felt so far away at the time and now it's like coming up and i'm like whoa what's happening uh but i it starts february 7th and it goes okay. through all of february and we're going back to some places that i've been to previously we're going to some new places but i'm just i'm such a fan of ex-ambassadors like I have been for a really really long time and I got to meet some of them at a holiday party recently and so I'm just really excited oh that's, that's wonderful that's fun. yeah where does, where does it start I could, I could go look it starts up. I think in Berlin cool, cool yeah town. I think yeah. I have to turn Dr. Atomic a form, former employee oh, of ours yes. turn DJ turn genius um called Dr. Atomic he lives he's an American guy but he lives in uh, Munich with his Wife and two young babies. Oh, and, amazing. Uh, so he'd love to come out and see yeah. you. Yeah, I would love to have him. Yes, keep, yeah, keep us informed of your actual venues and, now, and so on. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the single and what it's about and the whole yeah. mental, mental health thing that you, you're into. Yeah, so it's called My Mind and I, and it comes out on January 26th. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think for me, I've always felt like my most intimate songs are ones that like, this sounds weird, but I almost feel like I didn't even write them. Like, I feel like I, it, they come and then I open my mouth and suddenly there's a song yeah. and it doesn't even feel like they're mine sometimes because they're so just like happening to me almost. Yep. Yes. And that was really the case with this song. And I was in, I wrote it over the summer and um, I was talking to my producer and my, my co-writer and I was just in a very tough mental place. Um, and I think, you know, I've, I've been very open with the fact that I've struggled with anxiety. I've struggled with my mental health. Um, I think that's really common for people in my generation. You know, we've oh, yeah. got all this social media and pressure. Yeah, peer pressure. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and there's just so many ways that like, I think the internet, I think it's amazing, but I also think it's caused, a lot more issues for, oh, yes. for yeah. us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I just, I started feeling like my brain was out of my control, like it had been hijacked or something. Uh -huh. And it was a really disconcerting feeling. And I was, I was just like coming up with all these worst case scenarios in my head and I was catastrophizing things and I was just uh -huh. not in a good headspace. And so I wrote, I, w I went into this songwriting session with some of my really close friends and I was like, to be honest, I don't know if we're going to get anything today. Cause like, I'm not feeling great mentally. And they were like, yeah, no pressure. Like, we'll just see what we come up with. And I was like, I do have this idea about like m my relationship with my own mind. And like, mm -hmm. maybe we could talk about my mind in a way that it almost feels like a romantic relationship or like a personal relationship yeah. because yeah. it really feels like I'm not connected to my mind right now. Like it feels like it's a separate entity. Wow. And I opened my mouth. I kid you not. I mean, this sounds dramatic, but it's, it's actually what happened. Like I said to my producer, I said, give me some sad chords. <laughs> and yeah. he sat down at the piano. He played a couple sad chords and I sang almost the entire chorus. Most of the lyric, it just like happened. Wow. And I remember we all sat there and we were like, 
Oh, yep. That's what we needed to say. <laughs> wow. You no, know, I love the title, My Mind and I, because sometimes you you feel like oh, yeah. you're in total control. And sometimes you feel like this 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 gremlin running around going, you can't do this. You're yep. not worthy of that. You're, you know, in my, in my case, it's like, well, what do I do? What am I for? Uh, you're old, you're fat, you're hormonal. Just, you know, give it all up. And yeah. I, I have conversations. I have meetings with myself. Sometimes I fire myself. <laughs> but I really wow. hear her, so she's back. Yeah. yeah, I totally get it. Like you know, um, we we automatically think that we're all, the hip bone's connected to the knee bone, and it's all one piece. But you know, depending upon the the social environment, or your finances, or your health, or other people that you're worried about, yeah, shit happens. And that's what I love about your music is that you have really tapped into what's happening to your audience because it's happening to you. Yeah. yeah. It's happening to everyone, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All and right. that's, I mean, that's the thing that's so crazy to see is like when I release these songs that feel so personal to just see that they, they are. Resonate. Yeah. Yeah. They do resonate and it's so crazy. Yeah. And so I hope that, you know, this song is, it's a little sad in the sense of it's sad to think that your relationship with your own brain maybe could be kind of messed up. I but at the same time, the last line of the chorus is, we're fighting to stay, won't walk away because this is for life. Because at the end of the day, it's like the longest relationship you'll ever have is the relationship you have with yourself. Exactly. That's right. You can't give up on it. You have to keep fighting for it and you have to keep trying to strengthen it and make it better. Yeah. Yeah. Diana's asking, can we hear the lyrics? You can pre-save it. Yes. Diana, the link is in the, uh, in the chat at the bottom. And I think, I think you're going to put the pre-save link on your website. Yes. So I need to do that. <laughs> right. It's all on my social medias as well. But it's on, on all of her socials. You can pre-save it here. It's coming up now at orcd.co. And the title is forward slash my mind and I. So there you go. Yeah. And it's definitely worth a pre-save. But so now to your, to your visuals, how on earth do you, I mean, obviously you have a great team of, of collaborators and friends and whatever. Um, some of your videos are just absolutely stunning in yes. their simplicity. Oh, thank you. How do you, yeah. what's the process for you, like as a visual artist coming up with? Obviously oh, it's one, like it, but. Yeah, no, it's it's honestly one of my favorite parts of making music no. because I just think they go together. Like it's so important, you know, the visual representation of a song is so important. Yes. And the simplicity, to be completely honest, a lot of it comes from the fact that I'm balling on a budget, you know, so you have to, <laughs> you have right. to make the most of, of, your resources. Yeah. There's yeah. another song title, Bullin' on a Budget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. But so like, for example, my song Skin and Bones, which is yeah. about just sexuality and like love and um, kind of loving in a way that's boundaryless and not feeling the need to label yourself and not feeling the need to define yourself and just being like, I love people for people. Yeah. Uh, and I had had a vision in my head of what I wanted that video to look like. And I wanted to start with this kind of glam, fancy version of me that's like the pop star version of me, you know, and I'm in this like fabulous dress and whatever. I'm all done up and made up and red lips, whatever. And then slowly but surely, I start like peeling off all of the layers. And, you know, it's really just meant to represent kind of the masks that we wear and yep. how we're all so beautiful and lovable and worthy of love without all of that. Yeah. And then simultaneously, we're showing... Um, clips of various relationships and these were all just fr friends and family who were willing to show up for me and and be on set and it was so fun um you know my little brother was there with his girlfriend and one of my managers was there with her girlfriend it was just so special and uh it made me really proud to see all of the love that I have in my life and the people yeah, in my right. life and and it was just amazing right yeah. No, I mean, and I just the one of the videos that struck me very early on and before you were born even was uh, the late great Sinead O'Connor. Mm. Just it was just her face and her mm -hmm. singing and um, your video with the mannequins. Yeah, I didn't even notice in the beginning in the that you were the one in the center. And then all of a sudden you start moving. Yeah, it's just such a stark reality. And then it makes perfect sense with the song and with the lyrics and with the space. So it's, yeah. I think, thank God that video music videos of one of the things that have survived, survived yeah. about the music industry mm -hmm. I mean, totally. MTV isn't what it was, but we're all walking around with little TV screens in our hands, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that so now I was just curious as to how you came, but if, if, if it was from budget constraints, <laughs> going that way, don't, you know, well, don't, I don't think 
it's a fun challenge to think of, okay, I don't have a big budget like, you know, Dua Lipa sure. or Miley Cyrus would have, but how can I really show this story visually within the constraints that I have? Yes, and I yep. felt like with Not All Men, that video that you're referencing with the mannequins, yeah. you know, it would have been amazing to get 500 women to show up and to be yeah. able to do that, but I couldn't do that. So right. how do I represent the impact of something like sexual assault, which is what the song is about, right. and the, the percentage of women who go through that yeah. without being able to have, it was also just post, right, it was also just post COVID. So I couldn't have a big set of people. No. And I remember thinking I could have this army of mannequins to show the sheer number. And at the end, it goes to like a green screen of just like hundreds and hundreds of mannequins. Yeah. And it just is meant to represent the fact that it impacts all of us. And yeah. then as I was working with this idea of mannequins, I also thought at the same time, that's showing exactly what we're supposed to be in yes. society. They want women to be little robots who don't have feelings and don't show too much skin and don't do this and don't do that. And you've got the perfect body, but you're not showing it off too much. But if you have, if you're too skinny, that's a problem. If you're too fat, that's a problem. If you're too yeah. old, if you're too, whatever it is. Yeah. And I, and I rem remember thinking these mannequins are actually such a great representation of like, and so that's why at the beginning, I'm sort of posed like a mannequin because I'm trying yes. to be what society wants me to be. Yeah, and right. then you realize that even if you are exactly what society wants you to be, you're still a woman mm -hmm. and you still go through this stuff. I'll have, I have a book that I'll loan you when we meet. It's um, by a dear friend of ours. He's an absolute brilliant mind. He's a Greek man now living mm -hmm. in London, Antonis Karidis. I think Karen Glosman um, knows him and um, it's called icons. And mm -hmm. he, travels around the world. He's, he was the very first person into 360 degree photography. He designed mm -hmm. a camera the size of a Coke can with like, it's like a, a fly's eye with all these lenses all over it. And we used it on the finale of American Idol with Lady Gaga and So You Think You Can Dance, whatever. Wow. We wrapped the camera like a Coke can, like the sponsor, but all the time it was filming and streaming you know, to the world. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met him. But because he travels the world with his technology, and he lands with jet lag and he's a photographer, he would go out and walk around at night. And the only thing he would see is closed shops and in the windows, these mannequins. And he's, he's, kind, he's done oh, this yes, beautiful, beautiful photograph book of mm -hmm. just lonely mannequins in windows all over the world. Wow. And made up the story of, you know, what are they, what, who are they? What are they thinking? Mm -hmm. And they're That's behind amazing. glass. That's yeah. I'll, I'll loan you that one. When yeah. We make a really good That's book. That's very cool. Mm. It's a really good book. I'm so now what are you, what were your original musical influences? Who did you dig when you were young? Well, oh, excuse me, when you were younger. Yeah. Um, I have always been really inspired by the first thing that always gets me is the voice. And so I think I've always been really Im impacted and inspired by like women with big voices. That's mm -hmm. why I, I, I mentioned earlier, Christina Aguilera, Amy right. Winehouse, you oh. know, um, Adele, Lady yeah. Gaga, those are some of my like biggest inspirations and references. And then as I've gotten, as, as I've developed as a songwriter, I think I've been more and more inspired, not only by their voices, but what they say with their voices. Yes. So, you know, I love people like Pink because I think she talks oh, yeah. about, Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just love her so much. And I think she talks a lot about, you know, the role of women and what we, again, what we endure and what we go through. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really just inspired by women or someone like Sam Smith. You know, Sam Smith yeah. is talking about they're breaking gender roles, but also talking about things that are kind of taboo. And so I just really love people with unique, powerful voices who are also saying something interesting. Yes. Right. And some of the voice, that's why I think uh, immediately I was hooked on, uh, became a fan of yours is because I, I mean, as much as I admire Christina Aguilera, and I think she's an amazing artist and technician, Sometimes, like in Lady Marmalade, it's just too much for me. I just can't, I can't even, right? But when I was growing up, um, artists that you probably don't even know or remember, women's voices that I loved were Karen Carpenter, the drummer from The Carpenters, mm. and, mm. and yeah. Murray, the, the, uh, she sang a song called Snowbird, who was a Canadian singer, mm. because they sang it with almost like when you hit a triangle, there's that pure note and the timbre, and then it, it goes on, it resonates, and then it ends, but it leaves you with something. It's not all this, ah, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's what I love about your voice is that you, you get in there and you say what you have to say, and you can feel kind of like this velvety passion that comes Thank out. You so I, much. I, I can't mm -hmm. describe it any other way. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm sure you have the talent to do all those triplets and whatever, but you don't. I don't know. <laughs> 
oh, I don't know. <laughs> you, you don't overuse it because sometimes with a lot of these, oh, you know, I know, these yeah. old productions, mm. Whitney Houston could sing gospel. She was, to, to me, one of the best singers ever. Mm -hmm. But the producers wanted her to put all these frills and trills everywhere. And I yeah. think sometimes the message gets lost. And with your kind of music, the message is just as important as the voice in the production. Yeah. Me. Well, I think Whitney Houston is such a fantastic example, too, of – Mm -hmm. She had such an ability to control her voice. So yeah. she could be so intentional with the way that she's saying every single word. And yeah. so, and everyone knew she could do the big riffs and the huge notes that no one else in the world could do, but right. she would save it for the exact moment that she wanted in order to have the most impact. And she would start really light. And like, I mean, I don't know anybody who has the control to be able to, to sing the way that she sang, you know? Um, and I think actually... Billie Eilish is a really interesting example of this. Oh, yes, yes. With that, with that song um, from the Barbie movie, What Was I Made For? She yes. talks a lot about how it was so important for them to, I've seen a couple interviews about it where she talks about singing that in such a like sad, broken way was yep. so important to the message of the song, whereas she could have taken it down a step and had a, a little bit of a beltier tone, but she chose right. not to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. I love Billie Eilish. I just she's amazing. She, yeah. She just does her own thing. And, mm -hmm. and the fact that she gets to work with Phineas, her brother, is just great. Yeah. yeah. I just think Seriously. that that's, you know, mm -hmm. they've got each other's back and there's, yes. there's no, Wonderful. it's like you and your family, you know, get, getting it, keeping mm -hmm. it all in the family. I think yeah. it's just, 100%. it's, it's, it's serves the art better because you're not yeah. stressed out about strangers and a million different things and playing yeah. whack-a-mole with, do I trust this person or that yes. person or, you know. Do you have much communication with your fans? Yes. <laughs> I respond to every message I get pretty much. Wow. Um, and I, I, that's like a big priority for me because – I want to have a really intimate relationship with them. And I'm so lucky that, you know, I have people who will travel to come see me perform live or people who have gotten my lyrics tattooed on their bodies. And I don't oh. take that lightly at all. And so for me, if they're going through something and they want to reach out to me, I want to always try to give them the best advice that I can. Oh, and that's nice. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And I just always want to be in contact with them because again, like you said, First of all, they really dictate, I think, what I'm writing about because yes. um, I mm -hmm. want to write songs that they love, but also we're going through the same stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. So, Karen, our friend in Scotland, saying, come to Scotland on your tour, Morgan, and walk in the Highlands, and I'm for you, sure you'll find a song in the breeze. Oh, I would love to. I actually got to go to Scotland on the last tour, and it was so beautiful. I loved it so much. It is. Mm -hmm. We just, Martin and I just spent a few days uh, volunteering down at the Springboard Music Festival uh, run by our dear friend Barry Coffing. It was down in Ocean Beach, one of my mm. favorite little funky beach towns in San Diego. And there was a, we, Martin and I gave a panel on AI in the music industry and how musicians can leverage AI and not let it overtake them, you know, mm. all of the tools that you can use. Um, and there was a very interesting young artist there that I will be happy to introduce you to. Her name is uh, Mellow B. Mm. And she's created her own Mellowverse on Roblox and she's selling music NFTs and she has levels of membership, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. And she's got the whole plan worked out. She's willing to share it with the world. It sounds like you have enough fans that some music NFTs, like if you own, um, it's a hundred bucks mm. to buy one of her tracks and then you get digital, you get a package of stickers and you get a t-shirt. And then once a month she does a Zoom with, those NFT holders. And then if you buy 10 for a thousand bucks, then you go up to the next level and the next wow. level. And then the platinum level, if you buy $2,000 worth of her music uh, via these digital releases, um, you, you and a friend get to go see any of her shows anywhere she's playing anywhere in the world for free. They, she just wow. puts you on the list. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, that's to the, to the generation of people that you're talking to who all yeah. live on their mobile phones. Yeah. Uh, I think NFTs are making a comeback. So I'd love to talk to you about, you know, how to hook you up with, with her because she's yeah, just I would love to. incredible yes. stuff. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you have a big enough fan base and they're young enough that I think they would definitely, you know, definitely get it. And then you become part of a collector's club and what yeah. she does too. She, she, I was talking to her on her, um, Zoom. She'll just let all of her fans talk about anything. Somebody will put in the chat, why don't we talk about so-and-so? And she's got so much inspiration for, yes. for lyrics mm -hmm. from her audience. It's like, you know, poll the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> What do you yeah, want me exactly, to write about? Exactly. You know? Yeah. Such a it's a smart way to do it. Putting mm. put it in the put it in the mirror. Mm. And it takes the pressure off the artist a little bit. If you know, like when I was growing up and John Lennon would come to our 
house as a kid and look at all of the fan mail that would be delivered, he'd be like, God, if we could only just get in touch with them and ask them, where should we go and what should we sing and what should we write about and which suits should we wear and how should we comb our hair? You know, if we could only just like pull the audience, pull the, the customers. The customers he used to call them. Yeah, yeah not the fans, the customers. The customers yeah. And now we have the technology for that. So I think- Yeah, you can literally do a poll on your Instagram story of like, hey, where do you want me to tour? Yeah, it's amazing how easy it is to to yeah. access people's you know. Right. Yeah, and then Nick Black, who uh, is on or was on, he's done amazing things using the Twitch platform. Yeah, um, with you know fundraising and and meeting people. He went to TwitchCon in Paris and met people that he'd only met virtually, and done collabs and so That's on. That's so, so wild. So yeah, yeah I think I think <laughs> I think there are good ways to use this technology that it'll it sets your brain back in that okay, there's good people out there. Sure, agreed. Yeah. Sometimes you get to a place and you think, oh, everyone's an asshole. <laughs> now, tell me about puppies. Oh, uh, what's I'm, this all about? <laughs> I'm fostering a little, he's right here. He's a little pit bull. He's sleeping. Uh, I'm fostering him right now. I Because I travel a lot, it's kind of tough for me to have a dog of my own. Yeah. But I just, I love dogs so much. I'm like a big dog person. And my little brother has a dog. So I have a doggy niece. But she's not mine. <laughs> and, you know, it was the start of the new year. And I've, I've fostered in the past. And uh, I just was like, I want to do something positive. I want to do something to help somehow. Yes. And I knew I would be home for a few weeks before I left for tour. And so I, uh, I asked this organization if they needed any, any fosters. And they always have, I mean, they, you know, every animal shelter needs help because yes. there's just so many animals that don't have homes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, his name is, well, we call him Georgie and he's so cute and he's a little menace, but he is this, he loves to snuggle, like loves it. Aww. And he just is the cuddliest little thing. And he's got a lot of puppy energy, but he's napping now. <laughs> how, do, how do you not fall madly in love with them and break your heart when you give them back? I do. I do. I literally tell my boyfriend all the time. I like go back and show him pictures of our old dogs. And I'm like, do you remember this one? Do you remember this one? <laughs> yes. See, I, but I think. I think honestly, the fact that I do leave all the time and I know that I can't have a dog and, and give it the attention that it deserves, um, it almost makes it easier because it's like we get to enjoy it while while we have him. And yeah, yeah. 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 Our, friend, our friend in uh, Israel saying she had a cat named Georgie. So that's yeah. crazy. Or <laughs> or and Elizabeth, it's I agree. Animals are people too. Yeah, like our family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it, he's just so oh. they really are so sweet. It's, so. And dogs, what, what they're doing with dogs now in, in the medical field is incredible. Dogs can smell cancer. They can smell diabetes. They can smell. Oh, oh yeah. There was, a, there was a story not long ago where this guy um, had a trained uh, uh, service animal, obviously, and he went into a diabetic coma, for, you know, fell asleep oh, and went into right. a coma. And the dog knew to alert and push his life alert thing because he could smell the sugar on his on his brain. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the medical dogs are incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing to see. The He's now used, waking up. He knows we're talking about him. That, <laughs> does he? Georgie. Georgie, look. <laughs> yeah, people oh. from Israel and Scotland and yeah. England and from America. Let him off the couch because he's even Australia. <laughs> smaller than he is. Hey, hey, there, Georgie boy. boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been an absolute joy. Tell folks where. Um, they can find you on, you know, your website and your socials and all of that stuff. And when, when yes. you post thoughts, because we have people from Europe on, and then this will get yeah. re reposted on YouTube. Amazing. Um, yeah. You can find me anywhere you listen to music. Just search Morgan St. Jean. Um, my socials, I think, are all Morgan St. Jean. So if you find me, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, and yeah, if you're in Europe, I am going to be on tour in Europe all of February. Would love to see anybody, meet anybody see you at a show and thank you guys so much for having me you guys are so fun Ooh, great was pleasure, absolutely really. great we'll post this on youtube mm -hmm. and post uh, post the link yeah. later and uh, as our regulars uh, including paul moody will know because madam has a, a a book out called liverpool limericks and other random irish haikus <laughs> And so she just started writing limericks a while ago. And yeah. so for our very special guests, mm -hmm. you get your very okay. own limerick. I'm put my other wow. Oh, yes, yeah. the very own limerick. It's exciting. Yes. It'll be in the next book. Yeah. Yeah. So, and a one, two, two three. three. Today, Today we've, we've met Morgan St. Jean, whose music burst onto our scene. 
Thanks to our buddy Reed, who liked what he seed. Now on Tflix, she's gracing our screen. Ta da! Oh my goodness, that's so cute. Oh, there go. <laughs> I love it. I took a little, uh, little um, liberty with the word seed, but I know. love it. <laughs> Art. <laughs> this has been a joy. So everybody, I think you've you made some new fans today. I'm sure you have. And yeah. um, I'm sure we will make a few thousand more when we post it on YouTube. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much because I know how busy you are prepping for the tour. Thanks. Not at all. We'll have to do a South Bay tea soon. Yes, Absolutely. okay. Right. Right. Mrs. Right. McCartney's tea. Yes. yes. There, might, there, might be a little, there might be a little sherry involved. Oh, we'll drop oh. it up in it. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. We'll see you, see you soon. soon. Bye. Bye-bye.